Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for joining me and my team here at Shaw to talk to you today about camera tracking for integrated systems. It's not normally a subject matter that we associate a microphone manufacturer to be talking about cameras, but we've seen a lot of system designs recently incorporating some of the advanced features of our microphones into camera tracking platforms. So hopefully it's going to be an interesting discussion. Uh, let's just start off with some housekeeping. We are on the GoToWebinar platform today, so you will find a chat box to the right-hand side. Please feel free to use it and talk amongst yourselves. If you wish to ask a question specifically for me to answer, I will try to do that at the end, else I can take that away, find the answer for you, and get back to you in good time. So with that, let's take a look at the agenda for today. Um, we are going to start with a broken uh, queue thing, which is great. Here we go. Here we go. I have to highlight PowerPoint for it to work. We're there. It's proof. It's live. Anyway, so we're going to look at four things today. We're going to have the technology overview. So what is a camera tracking system? When might you use it? And what components might you need to make it work? Um, we are going to look at the shore portfolio of microphones which complement those systems. We are going to look at some specific vendor partners and how they've developed their camera tracking platforms to best use our products and deliver dynamic, engaging content. And at the end, I will try and answer some of the questions that you may have throughout. So let's start at the beginning. Technology. What is camera tracking? Well, a very simple definition would be a camera that moves or follows a presenter as they talk and um, moves around a specific place to make content a bit more dynamic. So in a small room, you may not need this uh, because a fixed camera could easily capture the faces and the detail of four participants. But if we start to get more participants in a room, larger spaces, then that one big overarching view of that room might not be the best thing to present to the far end of a video conference or a broadcast at that point. When you want to capture multiple participants or multiple angles of the same participant, so for example, we have more than one camera in our studio here today, I'm presenting to this one, but it might be that I want to go to an alternative shot and talk about some product over here, and we can look at our secondary camera, or equally just for some kind of alternate view we can use our over-the-head studio camera which makes you have a bit more of a dynamic uh, presentation for me rather than looking at that one shot so we'll keep those moving throughout the day so that's a, a good example of a multi-camera setup we can then look at this idea of a touchless conference so we don't actually need to have any physical buttons in a space to make camera tracking work, and we don't even need an operator. We can just use some of the intelligence based in our uh, MXA microphones and multi-lobe pickup to trigger camera preset recalls, um, which means you can actually just have these dynamic content pushed out to your users without any interaction or knowledge of the system for your room users. This can very much drive interaction and it can keep people more engaged in your online content and your online meetings. The other advantage of this is presenters often don't stay in the same place and reference the camera. They often move off shot and it starts to look a bit awkward. So at this point, we can use a more appropriate camera. So where might you use these systems? Well, obviously in a lecture theater or a speech application where you want to deliver some dynamic content and your presenters moving around. Um, you might want to use it in a more uh, kind of formal discussion like a council chamber. So you want to queue up people who are going to talk and as they present their pitch to the meeting, the relevant camera might cut to that person so that you can then really get more of a TV production type scenario for your council meetings and larger meetings as well. So it might be that you have lots of people in a space all facing the front. Um, and instead of having one camera shot for facing into an audience, you want to be able to zoom into the people participating. That would contribute to a camera tracking system. In video conferencing, we can make uh, Zoom meetings and Teams meetings and any other of the online platforms which people are using now to conduct business meetings. 
a static camera over multiple uh, hours of time can look a bit boring and a bit draining and it can cause people to disengage but keeping that camera moving every five or ten seconds or even just as the conversation flows and focuses on the people can drive engagement and keep people interested in the meeting it can be really useful for training scenarios so when you've got people on the far end of learning if you actually want to show them some equipment you can have close-up microphones on a desk when then the camera can you know, track the presenter as they move around and you can see the detail of what they're talking about and all these things we can use for capturing as well recording meetings recording lectures in universities recording council meetings and just having that archive of content is becoming ever more valuable so what technology do we need to think about when talking about a camera tracking system? So there's a few ways to do it. The first is face detection. So here is where some of the cameras on the market now have some a artificial intelligence built into them where they can track certain elements and geometric shapes within the frame and determine that that is a person or a person's face. And they can then move and focus that uh, one camera's kind of soft PTZ within their camera to move around. So this works by looking for eyes, nose and mouth kind of triangulation in a picture. And then you can see, all right, okay, there's a camera over there, it's moving, there's a triangle, like let's shift to that location. Um, this can work very well, um, but it doesn't work particularly well or it starts to suffer when you get people wearing glasses or having beards. So maybe I'm not the perfect person to be demonstrating face detected camera tracking, um, but as AI moves forwards, I'm sure those things will get better and better. We can scale that up to motion detection. So you will see that in your video frame, most of the pixels are static. So there's not much change going on over here in my background image, but there's lots of change going on with me, the person. So we can start monitoring the pixel moving on the camera. And then we can say, all oh, right, the bulk of the pixels within this frame are not moving. So we can just chop them out and focus on the bits that are moving and then move around within the frame. We can do area tracking. So you can use a wide fish angle lens to overlook a, a large area and then draw a, a area within there that you want to have your camera move and track across. So that would do a similar thing to the motion detection where it's looking for movement within an area and then you can pan or tilt your camera within that section and, and ignore other areas. We can have a pressure mat on the stage. This is kind of a rudimentary, bit more older style technology now, but it does exactly what it says. It will ma manage uh, and measure pressure across an area, and then you will have various presets within your camera that when pressure is detected in the front left of the stage, then recall preset camera number one. When you feel pressure at the back right, recall camera preset number two, and so on and so forth. You can give people a particular infrared device that a system is looking to track you around. So this might be uh, an inline addition to a handheld microphone, or it might be a lanyard that you wear, and then you would have an infrared uh, radiator and tracking system on that space, and it can locate you as the person within that area. Uh, I don't know if this is the exact technology I saw in use a few years back when I took my daughter to watch a Disney on Ice uh, concert, but I was particularly impressed by the way that the moving head PTZ lights were following the dancers around the stage. And of course, you're not going to have it pre-programmed that the dancers will follow a particular pattern every time they do the performance, but they will be wearing some kind of tracking device, which is all then tied back to the PTZ lights. So therefore, the same technology can be used for cameras also. Um, another way we can do this, particularly in a council chamber environment, is use a push to talk system. So if you want to actually have some management over who's talking and presenting within a system, you may want them to activate a button that says, yes, it's me, I'm talking, and therefore you have an absolute command string going to a camera preset recall to focus on that particular person. Maybe you can use some additional things like lower thirds, where we can bring up the name strap of who that person is talking based upon when they push their button. Nicely done, Timo, thank you very much. And then we can start to look at combining 
multiples of these elements to make the system even more reliable and robust. So perhaps we could use voice and face detection together. So this is where you would use those some of those triangulation of people's eyes and mouths with a microphone that can detect they are talking in this absolute position in the room and then that could further enhance false positives in the camera tracking system and avoid some uh, maybe awkward framing that you weren't hoping to get. We can have auto framing, so this is where a camera with a very large fisheye lens can capture a huge area and then you can use software within that camera to just chop out little areas. So you don't have moving cameras, but you do have a, a big canvas to kind of pinpoint areas of interest. And finally, we can have speaker activated tracking, which is really where our MXA microphones and IntelliMix algorithms come into play, because we can use microphones to detect who's talking in which area of the room to drive the camera presets as well. Cool. So there's some different types of camera tracking here, which we can loosely put into two boxes. We would have the manual approach. So this is where you need one or multiple operators to keep an eye and a view of what's happening and then make their camera cutting and framing decisions, uh, much like you would see in an actual TV broadcast scenario. But that is quite an expensive operation and you may want to uh, not have camera operatives for all of your internal VC meetings. Um, and you also require somebody not only to use the camera, but somebody else to also monitor what's happening like Timo is doing here and making a creative decision on what the far end people should be looking at. On the other side, you've got the more automated approach. So this is where we program a system to react within given scenarios and then cut to um, predefined presets. These can be further split into two. You might have an all-in-one system that can do the microphone and the triangulation of the where the audio is coming from and the multi-sensor camera and the um, voice tracking all-in-one. So there's a few of those on the market. Uh, and then you can look at external systems where you can then go and look at maybe the appropriate cameras and the appropriate microphones when an all-in-one system is not suitable any longer. So from the external microphone point of view, we can look to our portfolio and see that we can then start to overcome the distance limitations that some of these all-in-one products have. So they may work well for an eight-person meeting room, but once you scale that up to 16, 24, 36, however many, there will be a, a limit of where the performance factor of those camera systems can reach. You may want to think about having alternate camera angles. So if you're mounting one camera at the front of the room, it may not have the flexibility for the type of shots that you want. For example, you may want a reverse shot. So you might want to have two cameras, one facing at a lectern and one facing back into the audience. An all-in-one system would not allow you that flexibility. You may want a flexible application. So you might want to have it working one day as a council chamber. You might have it working another day as a boardroom. So yes, we can start pre-programming certain scenarios within the system. We can do some smooth image transition. So what this means is nobody really likes to see the motion of cameras on a screen. What we like to see and what we're used to seeing on TV is definitive hard cuts between shots. So we can use two or more cameras per position and have a primary and a secondary shot. And then you will always reframe and cut, reframe and cut. So it means that you don't actually have to see cameras moving left and right, which is a much more natural way to have your video presented. And then we can look to our estate we can fit these camera tracking purposes to any room and it might be that you have different use cases and different room scenarios so an off-the-shelf all-in-one system might fit one type of room but in another room on your estate you want to look at something different um, and we can also combine with our mxa microphones voice lift application with camera tracking because the microphones will always tell the system which one of their loads is activated we can take the audio from that lobe 
and push it to elsewhere in the room and also preset recall the camera based upon the same decision. So we can do lots of different things with the command strings coming from our products. So how does it work then? So if we know a little bit about our MXA 910s, they've been around for about five years now. And what we're doing with those microphones is predetermining areas within a room where we expect audio to come from. And then we can zone those out with our lobes. In our example up on the screen here, you can see eight lobes around a table. Each lobe can pick up one or multiple participants for that zone. And then if anybody within that zone talks, that lobe is activated and the camera can be told to recall the preset, which is most appropriate for that position. This works really excellently for the larger rooms and for a, a long distance between talkers and the microphones. We can use it for multiple participants because we can scale this up so that you can have multiple microphones doing decisions across a larger space. So we're not looking at just one mic, we can augment them together. We can have multi cameras because we can say, right, anybody talking in this area from these lobes should really be focused on the camera that's over there. And we can say that the people who are talking from this side of the room are better positioned for the camera that's over there. And then we can really start thinking about how do we present these people to the far end. And because it's all driven by audio, we don't have to touch any buttons to recall these presets. It's all automatic and therefore touchless. So which mics in the short portfolio are suitable for this kind of use case? Well, we have some wired mics. Uh, we have our MXA 310s, 710s, and 910s. These are all Dante-based products, and they all have the same IntelliMix algorithm built into them, which tells the control system of choice, this lobe is active, make a decision, please. We also have our wireless microphones. So these are anything from the MXW in the decked band to the UHF bands, which we can use SLXD, QLXD, ULXD, and Axiom Digital. They don't necessarily all trigger cameras by themselves, but once you pair them with our P300 DSP or IntelliMix room, we then have an automatic mixer, which can start determining, ah, Person wearing lav mic one who sat in seat number one, he is active, therefore call preset number one. And in the more camera, uh, no, sorry, the more council driven markets or the more managed discussion systems, we have our MXCW MicroFlex Complete Wireless System. This is the more traditional push to talk scenario where somebody presses a button, their microphone goes active. Once their mic is active, a command string is sent and a camera preset recall is determined. This is good because you can stack up command strings of who's expected to come up next. So, so you can interpret some of these um, request cues uh, in your camera tracking to start thinking, ah, we're gonna go to camera shot one, then five, then nine, based upon this kind of predetermined list of people who are gonna talk. DSP, I've mentioned already, so with the wireless mics and if we're aggregating multiples of the MXA mics, you would want to use our DSP products because then we can start saying, ah, okay, somebody in mic number one is talking and it's mic number, uh, lobe number four within mic number one, which means camera preset number 10. And we can build all that logic out. So, based upon that, Let's have a little look at some of the camera tracking solutions on offer um, by third party companies who are using Shure mics and Shure uh, command strings to help drive this camera preset recall camera tracking systems. I'm going to take a look at five today, uh, but there will be others on the market. We will have a look at Crestron, Ava, Arec, Multicam, and One Beyond in that order. Uh, and we can, we've chosen these because um, they do have active presence in the market and we know of systems out there in the world actively using and being successful partnering their camera tracking with our microphones. So, Crestron. Crestron are arguably the leading uh, manufacturer of control systems. So this, you can use one of their 
um, control processes to listen to and make decisions upon command strings coming from the Shure portfolio. And then adding to that, we also have the Crestron Flex UC100, which has been uh, through the Microsoft Teams certification program for using MXA 910s. So therefore we can start mixing and matching and making a DIY camera tracking system with our own custom code, which gives us ultimate flexibility in which cameras to use, which microphones within the MXA range to use, uh, and which endpoint we can interface those with. So here's some of the components. You've got a Crestron control touch processor. You've got a um, sorry, control pro uh, control panel for doing the kind of programming and the I want to turn my camera tracking system on and off type commands. And those are all tied back to the central processor, which has had its code written to do some of these camera tracking preset recall states. So a complete system might start by looking at one room. So one room with an MXA 910 program to pick up those participants around the table. The Crestron processor is then listening to those incoming command strings from the microphone and dictating which camera preset to recall. This gives you the choice of camera to use. It gives you the choice of um, platform to use, um, whether you want um, SDI, out of your cameras, whether you want HDMI out of your cameras, whether you want to be running NDI or all three at once, um, you can make those decisions and those routings within the Crestron environment. Um, and it gives you that very nice, flexible um, and complete customizable control over your system. We can scale this up, of course, um, whereby you can have a larger room with two or more MXA 910s or 710s if that is more architecturally friendly. And then in this point, you would want a um, IntelliMix processor like a P300 or a IntelliMix room licensed PC. So then we're doing two decision-making processes. Yep, that mic over there, that person within that zone equals this process. So just adding the devices that we're monitoring the command strings from and making decisions upon those bits of data. So highlights of the Crestron system, we've got the fact that it's it's DIY, so maybe it's a bit more uh, involved in getting these systems up and running. It's not an off the shelf. You do need to go away and, and figure out which are the most appropriate devices for your use case. But it is fully programmable. You can get right into the nitty gritty of how and when you make the camera cuts, how much delay time do you need? Do you want this camera under this decision? Blah, blah, blah. It, it, it is endless. Um, we can integrate the camera control processing with a room automation system as well. So it might be that you want to turn camera tracking on, which also makes the lighting in a particular way, which also reconfigures the mics in a particular way and all those kind of things. There's no limitation of which cameras and microphones you want to use. You can choose the absolutely correct camera and mic for the application. And they support MXA, MXW and MXCW command strings. Okay, oh, I've moved on a bit quickly there, but a, another partner in our portfolio is Ava. So Ava are offering more of an out of the box kind of scaled back-ish version of camera tracking, but very, very flexible still and very quick to set up. So Ava's portfolio is really around the uh, PTZ Link software and which of their cameras are capable of receiving commands from their software. Um, it's very, very quick and easy to set up. I tested this in our office and we had a system up and running and doing preset recalls correctly and accurately with their cameras and the PTZ Link software within about 15 minutes. So really all you need to do is set the presets in the camera that you want to recall. You pair that with an MXA microphone and say, right, when you see this command string from this lobe, recall this preset. There are some delay timers and that's it. Um, it's very reliable, it's very quick and easy to set up uh, and it works very, very well indeed. So let's have a look at a system schematic here. We would have an MXA 910 and a couple of loudspeakers in the room. You've got a PTZ Link camera. And what happens is the microphone will activate for a given talker, 
the command string is sent to the PTZ link software and the relevant shot is recalled. Here we are. So you can see here the green area from the MXA 910 is the active talker and the red area from the camera is where it's pointing. We can scale this up. We are, so preset recall to the back table, another one to the second table, and it's all just driven by who's talking and which is the activated lobe within the MXA 910. So some highlights of the AVA range. We've got a broad range of the AVA cameras. So you've got multiple options for um, signal output type, whether it's NDI, SDI, or HDMI. And you've got multiple um, zoom ratios of the lenses. Um, it's a very simple and effective solution. You don't need any external control. All you need is a, a PC, which is probably already on your network anyway, to run the little piece of software, which is monitoring the command strings from the microphones. They do have some cameras which are USB output, so that makes it quite cost effective for the smaller room. So even when you're just having eight people, if you wanted to have that dynamic shots per eight um, people around the table, we can do that. And they support all microphones within the Shure MXA range. Next up on our vendor partner list is AREC. So Arec design their own AV over IP solutions. Um, they've been building their own software and hardware, which also includes signal um, capture for doing lecture capture and streaming and camera control all at the same time. Um, and they're used across a wide range of markets, um, education, enterprise training, houses of worship. Uh, and it's all based around this centralized unit, the DS4CU speaker tracking station. So here is where you would connect your multiple cameras over their IP input. You've also got multiple inputs for content. Uh, and then you can use those inputs to create custom layouts, similar to what we're doing here today, actually, whereby you can take multiple cameras and content and create picture-in-picture -picture windows, custom layouts um, are based upon a preset recall if you actually want to have, you know, full screen for a part of your presentation, full screen camera for another part of your presentation, and then picture in picture for others. Uh, you can use multiple cameras for doing different shots of the same subject or different areas of the room. Um, and it's really an, an, a bit more bespoke out of the box um, that you can use to any kind of different room. So here we're showing um, the centralized processor here with uh, MXA mics, MXA 710 linear array above the TV, um, segmenting up the area into down the middle, two lefts and two rights, um, one camera in the, in the middle, so we can preset recall that as multiple people talk around the table. Um, if you wanted a more uh, camera-driven push, push to talk element, we can see that we've got the Shure MX CW APT here. So each of the participants around that table, here we're showing eight, but this can be scaled out to 125 different participants and uh, camera presets. Each one of those will press their microphone button and when they are live, the camera preset recall is triggered. Uh, and we can see here, we can also do some side-by-side -side view. So with the MXCW system, you can have multiple people talking at the same time. So therefore, if you've got two cameras, you can frame two different people within the screen, uh, give them a side-by-side -side view whilst they're talking, and then far-end people can see that dynamic exchange between those two participants. And here we're using uh, the MXW gooseneck microphones. So this is more of a traditional uh, boardroom setup with each person having their own wireless gooseneck mic. Those are all fed back over Dante to the P300 processor and the P300 processor provides those command strings out to the camera preset recall decision maker. Some highlights of the AREC system, we've got the options for recording and streaming at the same time within that uh, central processing box. So it's doing more than just camera cutting decisions. Uh, we've got support for multiple cameras and multiple microphones. We've got integration with a variety of the Shure mics. So 
the whole portfolio from the MXA range, the whole portfolio from the wireless range via P300 or Intellimix room, and we've got MXCW as well. Third up on our vendor partner list is Multicam. So Multicam offer very similar to Arec. They've got their central processing box, which takes in multiple cameras and multiple content inputs, and then provides a, a way of tracking who is on a layout. Um, so we can see here, probably a bit better than I can describe it without the graphic, multiple elements of cameras, we can have up to eight, depending on the variety of processing box you choose. Um, and you can have a multiple of MXA microphones too. And the addition here is that you can pre-program what's called a, like a mimic. So you can have a manual operator also watching the conference and pressing buttons within that um, seating layout. So you've got two levels of um, decision-making there. You can either run it in a fully automated mode or you can run it in a slightly manual mode whereby somebody can watch who's talking and, and press the relevant button on the, the room layout, which will then recall the presets in the same way that the automatic system would. Um, that could also be done with the Microflex complete wireless system. Same thing, you can have the delegate microphones out uh, on the desk. And you could also have somebody monitoring that from a remote location. And if somebody happens to forget to press their button when they want to talk, you could have the mimic uh, on that screen do two jobs at once. You could press the button to activate the mic that they've forgotten to put on themselves and also cut the camera to that preset. So it gives you a bit of extra technician-led safety over the system rather than it being a fully automated one. So Multicam offer an all-in-one solution for recording and streaming. You've got manual, semi-auto, and fully op op auto operating modes, which I've just described. You've got a here, which is quite interesting, a built-in simple video editor. So it might be that at the end of your meeting, you want to trim out the first you know, five minutes that wasn't really useful. You might have a coffee break in the middle that you want to trim out and you might have a bit at the end that you don't need for the recording process as well. You can do, do all that within the Multicam system without having to export it to a video editing facility. They've got a fully open API for integrating their system with others like Crestron from a control point of view. It's got the touchscreen user interface and it is supported by all our MXA microphones. And lastly, on our vendor partner list for today, at least, we have one beyond. One beyond is uh, an American company. Um, the others are European. I think they are, um, well, they're European. Um, so one beyond have been developing camera tracking systems for 20 years and have been um, fully adopting our Shure MXA portfolio into their new Automate VX system. So Automate VX um, takes multiple camera inputs. It takes command strings from MXA and P300 microphone and processors. And then you can build out custom layers within um, this their software. We can do a lower third uh, naming recalls, dynamics from seating tables, and other very advanced features. So the recently updated the configuration of the One Beyond system so we can take all the commissioning efforts of the MXA process and move it into the camera tracking process. So what we can see here on the screen is an export from Shaw's designer software. This is used to set up the lobes within a space and plotting where people are going to be within the room. Uh, so multiple table, participants around the table, you can see here would be picked up by multiple microphone elements in different lobes. And then we can export that information and import it into the One Beyond Automate VX software, where we can then plot camera preset recall based upon uh, lobes with a, a logical association rather than looking at command strings. Um, so here we can see 
a little animation. Um, we select a mic and we select a position uh, and camera presets, and we can see that when people are talking from a given location, the cameras will recall their various presets. You've got narrows and wides. And what you can see here is two presets per area, which means you've always got a primary and a secondary shot to cut to, which gets away from that moving of cameras, which we talked about earlier. Um, for all the mics, we can add a camera, we can pair a camera to that mic and its lobe, and we can adjust the shot width all within the software without having to go into any camera menu. So it really is moving into the more drag and drop commissioning scenario, um, which makes the setup of multiple presets much easier to manage and much quicker to deploy. So here we can see a boardroom with MXA microphones. I think we've seen this graphic already. Um, yeah, this is just a, a duplication of the animation. Um, I think this is a slightly larger room. So here we can see that each lobe is picking up three participants and the camera preset would be relevant to that small group of people rather than an actual individual. Schematic wise, we're looking at two MXA 910s. We're looking at a P300 or Intellimix room DSP to um, augment those two together to get the absolute value of who's talking at which time. We've got the loudspeakers for a video conferencing, uh, far end input into the room, and we've got two cameras uh, and the video processing box for doing the camera switching and the recording and the switched output to uh, the USB or SDI feeds, depending on which you need. But what if we wanted to make this even bigger? So let's have a look at a boardroom. Uh, well, this is more of a large classroom, actually. So here we're seeing three MXA 910s um, and lots, uh, I think we're using three cameras as well. So the behavior here shows switching between cameras based upon which lobe is active. And also you, I think you're gonna see here different directions. So let's start the animation. You've got a reverse shot here. So you can click and drag this camera and put it when this person's activated, this is the camera preset we want to recall. And then we can show wide shots and narrow shots. So here we've got forward facing cameras and rear facing cameras, depending on who's talking and which is the most relevant shot to use. So this is really where you can see the value of exporting data from the Shure Designer software for setting up camera presets, because we can start to really match up visually where people are with what kind of camera shot you want to see. Uh, schematic wise here, we've got three MXA 910s, three cameras, uh, loudspeakers for the output, running over the network into the centralized PC for doing the switching and the framing. And what about here? What about a larger system here? So this is using single person shots. Um, it's using the MXCW delegate microphone system. And here we can say we can get really tight framing on the shot. So when talker one talks and act is activated by the speaker queue, we can see two different shots for every single person around the table. So as I mentioned before, we can scale this up in terms of MXCW to 125 participants, and therefore we can have 125 different camera presets within the One Beyond system to really target who's talking. Uh, cameras can be talking over the network on NDI into the system, so we don't need to run SDI or HDMI infrastructure. It can be all on the network, uh, which makes for very simple de deployment in terms of cabling uh, and installation. Um, and here we've got MXCW in a slightly different format. We've got, uh, this is more, I think, a council, uh, court area where you would have a, you know, a judge's panel and a, an audience uh, and maybe a defense with a remote participant on the screen on the right-hand side there. So there's a government council chamber. So this has got more traditional fixed gooseneck mics, um, but exactly the same thing applies we can take command strings from those gooseneck mics via a DSP and program our camera presets in the same way. 
Here we're using five PTZ cameras, so we've got a huge array of camera shots to use, which would give a very dynamic output or recording for you know, remote participants who are not actually in the room. Uh, another use case for this could be actually live relay for the cameras. So it might be that you've got uh, a viewing gallery that's in a room next door or uh, at another location. You could output from the uh, switched camera to the viewing gallery if they're not within the same space, as well as doing recording and streaming and VC at the same time. Um, if we want a little slightly scaled back version, One Beyond do have a system here whereby there's a little insert into a, a hand microphone for a presenter. So this I think works on infrared, but I might be wrong. The mic locator button on the on the microphone can be turned on or off at the push of your of your thumb, and then when it's beaming out its infrared, it can be picked up by the camera uh, and followed around um, without having to do cuts and preset. It is much more of a fluid motion around. Uh, so that is a simple add-on to a sure handheld. So that could be done on a ULXD, uh, Axiom Digital, MXW, any one of our handheld devices that's got a removable capsule. So this could be really useful for audience Q&A. So it might be that you have a roaming mic that goes around a large audience and you just have one of these cameras uh, and you don't want to preset recall for every person in the audience. So you hand them the microphone with the infrared tracker on and that camera is automatically and always following that shot around the audience. Could be useful for panel discussions, could be useful for classrooms or, or a bit more of an informal meeting space. So here is an example of that. Here we've got an auto tracker on the front there that's being moving across the stage. And we've also got um, some auto trackers going out in the audience there. So using that maybe three of those handheld mics, you've got three continually focusing and moving uh, cameras. And then when the person is activated within the auto mixer from the discussion point of view, the camera is cut to. So that's a really nice and very fluid way of presenting three moving head cameras and audio based decision making. So there we are, some highlights of the One Beyond system. Of all the ones we've talked about today, I think it's the most comprehensive um, and it looks like it's the most intuitive to set up. Um, but that's not to say that the others aren't. You've got the picture in picture, you've got the side by side and other layouts. Um, uh, you've got built in storage for recording and then you've got multiple uh, options for doing streaming at the same time. You can do up to 10 camera switching. So there's a, a huge uh, array of camera options here, up to 10 cameras within multiple microphones. And of course, you can mix and match the technologies as well. You could be using MXA microphones in one area of the room. Then you would have some fixed goosenecks at a lectern. You might have some MXCW in there on another given day. And then you can use the, the handheld infrared tracking all at the same time. Cool. So in summary, Camera tracking is very much a hot topic of conversation because it really does drive content, it does drive um, engagement, and it keeps things much more interesting for people in a remote viewing or video conferencing capacity. We've talked about a few different uh, vendors out there who are offering different camera tracking solutions all integrated with multiple elements of the Shure portfolio from the MXA range and the wireless range. And depending on your use case, whether you want um, something kind of small and simple for your boardrooms, quick and easy to set up to something very, very comprehensive uh, and large across a council or a multi-purpose auditoria. I think we have that covered with all these five vendor partners on the screen here. And of course, I will be very happy to talk to you about the applications that you have for this in mind. So I'm going to switch over now to the questions. I will try to answer them. If any are burning in your mind, please put them in the box now and we'll see if any have come in and I'll try and answer them. Here we go. Um, so this is the first time I'm reading these. So it's a bit ad hoc. Do we have to predefine faces for camera tracking? Um, 
in some of i don't know exactly do you mean by the the triangulation of the faces and do we have to say ah this particular triangle refers to andrew and this particular triangle refers to um one of my colleagues no i don't think you need to do that the cameras that have this kind of ai based tracking within them uh, will just find these areas uh, and they will be recognized as people, but you don't have to predetermine which person that is. Um, but if you're talking about do we have to predefine where the lobes are for camera tracking, then yes, you do need to do that. Um, how many cameras can we use in such an application? Well, I think the limitation here comes down to uh, the vendor partner that you choose. Uh, if you're looking uh, for the AVA, no, sorry, yes, the AVA PTZ link system, as far as I know, um, and I can follow up with you if this is in fact uh, out of date knowledge, I think you can only pair one camera, but you can use multiple microphones to trigger presets from that one camera. Um, and then we've just seen at the end there, One Beyond can go up to 10 cameras. so between one and 10, you can use as many as you need. Um, are any of the cameras you suggest uh, MS Teams certified? Um, I don't have an absolute answer to that. Uh, we've covered a lot of vendor partners here with a lot of their cameras. I do know from a sure perspective that if you want to be team certified, you have to present Microsoft with a system that goes together and they will verify it. So I would encourage you to go and look at the Microsoft certified partners section of the Microsoft website, or indeed check with the vendor partners themselves to see if they have put their products through the certification process. Um, are there any plans for sure to use AI powered active speaker tracking? For example, working with the new category of intelligent cameras for MS Teams rooms. Um, I don't have the answer to that question. I would very much like to go away and investigate it because it sounds super cool. Um, but no, I don't know the answer to that one, sorry. Hello, is it possible to get the link to the recording? Yes, absolutely, we will be distributing that after the event, no problem at all. Um, I missed the beginning. Is it only one camera preset per MXA lobe? Uh, no, you you could you could have multiple cameras recalling different presets. I think I covered that. So the idea being that you can have a primary, a secondary shot, so that you can cut between cameras rather than having one camera move at the same time. Um, if you were to have, I think that's it really. Yes, you can have multiple cameras for the same lobe, uh, but you don't necessarily need to. Uh, when will AVA have more than one camera supported? I will defer that question to the AVA technical support um, people. Um, I can't answer roadmap for third party vendors, I'm afraid. Can we install Shaw IntelliMix software on a Flex Crestron system? Um, yes, you can. The Crestron UC Flex engine, uh, UC100, it has been through the MS Teams certification process and is fully capable of running IntelliMix Room with our MXA microphones. Um, again, please check the um, sure, Microsoft Teams section of the website to double check which specific SKUs go together to make up that MX um, Microsoft Teams certified system. Um, and we keep that website up to date with all the new certified products and systems. Uh, so you can keep an eye on it when new ones become available. Um, if I have one beyond auto tracking camera without automate system, can I pair it with MXA 910s or do I need one beyond automate for this? Um, this seems to be a question particularly around the one beyond product set. And again, I know how their system interfaces with the Shure products, but I don't necessarily know which of their products must go together to create a system. So I would like to kindly defer that to the One Beyond uh, representatives. Uh, and last question here, are there any systems that could also fully integrate with Teams Zoom Room systems so that remote participants 
can or could be tracked in a similar way to local participants within a given room. Um, I don't know. That seems like something I need to go away and think about and ask some questions of some colleagues, and I will happily get back to you, but off the top of my head, that is an unknown, I'm afraid. Right, one, uh, two have come in. Uh, is there an API to develop a custom program based on the active lobe reported by the microphone? Um, yes, our command strings are available for the MXA range, P300, and Intellimix room. They're all publicly available in the Shure website or the tech portal, um, and you are free to go and read those and write your own custom code as appropriate. No problem there whatsoever. And finally, is it possible to get the coordinates of the active lobe within an API? Um, at the moment, we are outputting a, a active channel command string. Um, there are um, XYZ coordinates available to those lobes. I think you can send a get command to the devices, uh, but I don't think at the moment they output them continually for you to interface with. So you could, upon receiving a gated on channel, ask the microphone to also report its X, Y, Z location, uh, but I don't think at the moment it is reported um, by default. I hope that answers your question. Is it possible to get the coordinates? Oh no, I've just answered that one. Cool. Right, 50, oh, there's another one. Loads and loads of questions. How the system will react when two different participants talk from different parts of the room? How smooth would the change between the cameras be? Well, if we look at the maximum number of open channels um, parameter within the Intellimix algorithm, we can narrow that down to just one talking participant, or we could expand that out to two. So if two people are engaging within a discussion across a room and you have two cameras, you could arguably frame the first active channel on the first person and frame the camera on the second person. And then you could flip flop between those two camera shots or some of the systems that we've seen today can take those two camera inputs and present a picture in picture, side by type, side type view. Um, and therefore, you could put some logic into the system that says, when both these channels are active for a given amount of time, then recall the side by side view. How smooth that would be, I think, will depend upon the delay timers that you put in between deciding whether that is the actual shot that you want to cut to or not. I'll wait a few more seconds to see if any last minute burning questions come in. Otherwise, I think we have finished right on time, which is nice to see. Um, yes, that's it. No more questions coming in. So thank you everybody for an hour of your time this afternoon to listen to me talk about the various camera tracking options we have using Shure microphones to dictate to a camera tracking system how a conversation is moving dynamically within a space and therefore take that data to drive your camera cutting decisions um, for more engaging content. So thanks for your attention and participation and we'll see you another time.